asking you. The United States has been rocked by three massive storms already this year. First, it was Harvey, then Irma, now Maria. Is there a scientific, a scientific explanation for why we've seen so many powerful storms this year, Bill? Well, we in the... Those of us who accept the science of climate change connect all of these with uh, having more heat energy in the atmosphere. And you guys, that's what it is. The sea surface is warmer than it's ever been, so the storms are bigger than they've ever been. Now, there was a lot of computer models that were working this problem and figured that there would be fewer, more, in there'd be more intense storms, but fewer of them. But wow, this year has been storm after storm, and we're not done. You know, the so-called hurricane season, which is a little bit arbitrary, runs all the way through November. And I'll just tell you, you know, the problem with these hurricanes is the structures, the infrastructure. They only last a few hours or a day or two, but when all the buildings and especially all the electrical power lines are destroyed and the water infrastructure is messed up, that's when you have all this hardship and suffering. So. We in the engineering community would prefer us to accept the threat of climate change and build our infrastructure, our buildings, our electricity, electrical uh, grid, and our uh, freshwater supplies to be more robust. Okay, I want to I, I want to mention someone who's pushing back on this. His name is Cliff Mass. He's a professor of atmospheric science at the University of Washington. He's pushing back on the idea that that the massive flooding we saw from Hurricane Harvey was caused by uh, climate change or global warming, Bill. He says, the bottom line is, this analysis is that both observations of the past decades and models looking forward to the future do not suggest that one can explain the heavy rains of Harvey by global warming, and folks that are suggesting it are poorly, in, poorly informing the public and decision makers. What do you say to that response? Uh, you know, as we say, he may be right. But wouldn't it be good if the infrastructure in Houston could handle that much rain? Wouldn't that be better? Well, how do we come out behind by having superior infrastructure, superior electricity, uh, electrical grid, superior uh, clean water supplies? What's the downside of all that? This requires investment. Right. And people are reluctant to invest. People are reluctant to, to set up a tax code that uh, provides more for government infrastructures. In the aftermath of Harvey and Irma, the response we got from EPA Director Scott Pruitt was that this was not the time to talk about climate change. At the United Nations, the president addressed the storms earlier today. I want you to take a listen to this. We have a big wind going right now. I've never seen winds like this. In Puerto Rico, you take a look at what's happening there, and uh, it's just one after another, but I think we are doing a good job. The response bill was widely uh, commended, but I mean, are we doing enough? To address the root cause. Oh, uh, if you're—I mean, I've been at this for almost 30 years now. <laughs> you know, uh, and so through by means of science education, and uh, then as the as climate uh, change became a political issue, you had you got you, people like you have thrust me into this position. But with all that said, wouldn't it be better if we had uh, energy independence? and reliable electricity for everyone and provide the internet for That's everyone, what wouldn't life be better? But this That's takes investment counts. and people disagree about in what to invest and somehow climate change has become part of this. It's how we come if out of it, live your get life, with the program. Uh, with, the, with the belief that uh, humans are not putting more carbon dioxide, enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to make the water uh, in the Gulf of Mexico warmer, to make hurricanes stronger, uh, okay. But what about the rest of us and the overwhelming uh, majority of scientists who've been calling attention to this issue since, well, certainly since 1988? The other big deal that's going on are these earthquakes. What? Let me ask you about that's that. Right. Let me question because there's a quote that I want to yeah. read you. It's a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in, in Mexico City yesterday. Um, and Mexico's west coast, actually, I just want to put up this map. Mexico's west coast was also hit by an 8.1 magnitude earthquake earlier this month. Could there be a connection between the quakes, or is it just a coincidence that both of these are happening now? And then I was in Los Angeles earlier in the week, and I felt the one that was uh, there as well, the center of the Westwood area. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, they're, they're completely unconnected. However, the connection for me as an engineer is in the infrastructure. We have an old saying. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, but there's an old saying in civil engineering. Earthquakes don't kill people. Buildings kill people. So if you are in, for example, the country of Japan, 
earthquakes are routine and they require buildings to be built to withstand, I mean, earthquakes are still troublesome and they're, people are still very concerned about them, but you don't have the sort of falling apart of infrastructure that we have to a limited extent in the United States and as we saw here in Mexico. And it's just, because it, it built requires investment. You can design buildings that withstand earthquakes. It takes more investment. It takes planning, it takes zoning, it takes thought. Yeah. But engineers have given it a lot of thought, and by embracing this bigger picture, I believe we could improve the quality of life of people everywhere. Bill Nye, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Good let's, let's save the world. And when we come back,